Meet the man who stole 1.4 billion with a screwdriver. I mean, he looks pretty proud of himself. I would be too, to be honest. It's pretty creative. This is a small museum with only a handful of guests visiting each day. And the security guard has just seen two of them, a man and a woman, walk briskly out of the front door. The guard sprints outside and catches sight of the couple getting into a car, and sure enough, the museum's missing painting is sitting on the back seat. That was easy, As case closed. Have it, the museum happens to be situated opposite a police station, and soon enough, the thieves are in custody. But at the subsequent trial, it's clear the man is extremely remorseful. It was he who took the painting, a spur of the moment decision he deeply regrets. Since the man's criminal record is clean, he's released with a suspended sentence, what? serving no jail time. Nice. Nobody knew Good work. at the time, but the Swiss authorities had just let the greatest art thief in history slip through their fingers. <laughs> this is the remarkable story nice. of Stefan Breitweiser, a hey, Frenchman Stephane. who stole almost one and a half billion dollars worth of art. To put that number into perspective, yeah, no one to, to sell it to. They're not gonna wander right money through him. The three most expensive paintings ever sold at auction: Leonardo da Vinci's Salvador Mundi, four hundred and fifty million dollars; Wilhelm de Kooning's Interchange, three hundred million dollars; and Cezanne's The Card Players, two hundred and fifty million dollars. You would still need to pilfer another half a billion dollars worth of art to surpass Stefan Breitweiser's record. The sheer volume of art Stefan stole is genuinely almost unbelievable. Thank you, some perhaps race. even more unbelievable is what he did with it all after he'd stolen it. He ruined it I'm for fun. I'm getting ahead of myself. For now, it's probably best if I start at the beginning. And I like bet that son stories, of a bitch stole my socks too. This one too. starts with cheese. Yeah. Sort of. In March 1995, Stefan Breitweiser was visiting Gruyers, the Swiss town that gave its name to a kind of cheese you've almost certainly enjoyed if you've ever tucked into a traditional Swiss fondue. But Stefan wasn't in town for molten dairy products. Thanks, Prime Josh. Along with his new girlfriend, Anne Catherine Kleinklaus, Stefan had his heart set on seeing Gruyers' medieval castle, specifically its collection of exquisite art. As the couple strolled through the ancient corridors, one piece in particular <gasps> caught Stefan's eye. A portrait by German painter Christian Wilhelm Dietrich. Staring at the painting, Stefan experienced one of those weird urges that we all have from time to time. A brief and intense desire to do something we really shouldn't. Something like jumping off a bridge, tripping up a passing pensioner, or what? stealing a painting. By the way, don't feel bad if you occasionally fancy downing an OAP. These kinds of inappropriate urges are so common, they actually have a name. Kakoifis. For most people, Kakoifis cool last cool a couple name. of milliseconds. But Stefan's lingered. So much so that he mentioned it to that new girlfriend of his. Now, I'd suggest that admitting you're tempted to commit a serious felony to your new Tinder date is usually a good way to earn yourself the in-person equivalent of a swipe left. But, to Stefan's surprise, his new girlfriend was all for it. The castle was basically deserted. Apparently all the tourists were off eating fondue. And all Stefan had to do was remove the painting from its frame, slip the canvas into his rucksack, and walk Well, that's easy. They were just asking for it to be stolen. He did them a favor. But an international art crime career, the likes of which the world had never before seen, had just begun. Thanks, Risa Bindu. Because over the course of the following six years, Stefan completed a grand total of 230 Jesus Christ. art heists at 172 what? galleries in at least seven different countries. Art Sounds like there's no security. So I know exactly how he did it. Long term career choice. Sooner or later, you're either going law. to There's get caught Samster. or make so much cash that you can retire to your own private island in Micronesia. If you're picturing grand heists with True Ocean's cooking. Eleven style planning and huge teams of specialists, you're dead wrong. There were no carefully or orchestrated distractions, no detailed museum schematics, 
and no jaunts through conveniently positioned air vents. In fact, these heists weren't even committed at night. They took place during opening hours and yeah, often people probably just saw him steal guards in the very same room. But all were almost laughably basic, pretty much involving waiting till nobody was looking <sighs> and then simply picking up whatever he fancied and walking out the front door. Paintings would be yep, that sounds about right. and hidden under a loose fitting coat. And display cases were opened with a screwdriver one twist at a time over the space of 20 minutes or so. The most high tech. And nobody saw this in 172 galleries? 172 galleries, no one saw him do this? Inconveniently placed CCTV cameras into facing away from whatever it was he was about. And nobody saw this? It's hard to believe that's all it took for Stefan to pilfer close to a billion and a half dollars worth of loot. What? But these basic tricks were so effective, he was often able to steal from the same museum multiple times in the space of just a few weeks. I should point out that estimates as to the exact value of the artwork Stefan stole vary. But the figure most commonly quoted is the one I mentioned earlier, $1.4 billion. According oh to the New York God. Times, it might have been as much as 1.9 billion. And if that upper limit is correct, How in as the of 2001, fuck? when this remarkable crime spree came to an abrupt end, Stefan Breitweiser, art thief, would have been amongst the top 250 richest people on the planet. But he has no one to sell it to. Not that you'd have known it from looking at him. In fact, to the outside world, Stefan and Anne Catherine, now his long term girlfriend, appeared to be stone cold broke kitchen no you can't sell the paintings whilst Anne Catherine all this shitty nervous. art is just used for money, money laundering so short that Stefan's mother no one's gonna wander money through Stefan and petrol money was this apparent poverty some kind of front then a Gus from Breaking Bad style cover story to hide their immense wealth from the outside world Stefan and Anne Catherine appeared close to destitute because that's exactly what they were. Despite having stolen well over a billion dollars worth of fine art. How do they not catch him by seeing who pushed the camera? To together. That's what I want to know. And not because they'd blown their riches on boats and hoes either. Despite having taken enormous risks to steal hundreds of treasures of almost unimaginable value, Stefan Breitweiser never sold a single one of them. Not one. And the reason why is kind of hilarious. Stefan didn't become the world's greatest art thief to get rich quick. He did so because he loved art. <laughs> Instead of selling the pieces he stole, he kept them in the apartment he shared with Anne Catherine simply to have the pleasure of owning and admiring them. Just print it out Incidentally, on the Google! In question was in the attic of Stefan's mother's <laughs> house in the what city the fuck of House, France. The couple were so poor they couldn't afford to rent. But selling a world famous piece of art it's is impossible. a seriously tricky business. Yeah, no, it's not gonna you happen. can't just set up an eBay listing and watch the million pound bids roll in. The market for this kind of thing is tiny. And in order to access that, you're probably going to need to make friends with some very dangerous people to help you get the word out. But since Stefan never put a single piece of art up for sale, he remained essentially invisible to the police. If they didn't catch him in the act of stealing, they weren't going to or catch steal him. or catch him in the, the act of pushing a camera away while on so camera. Unusual that the police had basically no idea who or what they were dealing with. Their best guess was that some kind of highly professional international cartel <laughs> was behind the crimes. Far more but embarrassing. Reality, they were utterly stumped. Ah! Stefan simply couldn't stop. And it was only a matter of time before something went wrong. Someone opened the their item eyes. That eventually ended his reign of art-based terror was, of all things, a bugle. At the start of this video, I mentioned that Stefan had been caught stealing a painting in Lucerne back in 1997. He'd gotten away with little more than a slap on the wrist at the time, but during the process of being booked, he'd had his fingerprints taken. From that moment on, he'd been careful to wear gloves during his thefts. 
to ensure he never left behind any prints that could be matched to his earlier arrest. Oh, and by the way, just to make things even spicier, this bugle happened to be located in the Richard Wagner Museum in, of all places, Lucerne. The very same city he'd been caught Aww. the first time. Stefan. I told you this man had balls of legend. So it was decided that Anne Catherine should be the one oh, to arrange the prince. Jesus Christ. But this was a risky job, and Stefan decided to travel with her for a bit of moral support. As this Anne guy's Catherine entered outrageously the museum, dumb, Stefan crazy. took a walk around the grounds to distract himself from worrying. Unfortunately for him, he was recognized by a man who'd seen him at the museum on the day of the theft. The police were called and Stefan soon found himself being arrested for a second time. To begin with, he wasn't unduly concerned. After all, he'd been caught before and gotten away with it. All he had to do was convince the police he was a remorseful first offender. And at first that little ruse seemed to be effective. But then something changed. The officers holding Stefan stopped engaging with him, and the sympathy his remorseful idiot routine had earned him evaporated overnight. Stefan started to fear the worst, and with good reason. Someone in the department had uncovered the report from the previous theft in Lucerne, and as a result, the police were no longer viewing him as an opportunist who'd snapped the bugle on impulse but as a potential serial The author. dumbest thief of all time. A few weeks after the arrest, Swiss police secured an international search warrant, allowing them to enter Stefan's attic apartment in Mulhouse. You know, the one containing one and a half billion dollars worth of stolen art. It's safe to say that as the team of officers arrived to carry out the search, none of them were prepared for what <gasps> they would find inside Stefan's modest home. Which was... Nothing. No works of art lining the walls. No antiques. No priceless jewelry. Not even a bugle. No, I haven't Just read anything or watched anything on it yet. Chat like mentioned it once, though. Wait. What? On witnessing her boyfriend being apprehended by the police at the Wagner Museum in Lucerne, Anne Catherine had immediately realized the dangers and sprung into action, driving back home and alerting the one person every man can rely on when shit really hits the fan. His mother. And Mrs. Brightweiser had outdone herself. Over the course of several days, she'd gathered up every single piece of art her son had ever stolen packed it all up into her car, and gotten it the hell out of there. Anything that sank ended up in the nearby no! canal. And the paintings, those centuries-old priceless works of art, <gasps> were burnt to ashes. Holy as shit! part of what may very well have been the most expensive private bonfire in history. The last few odds and ends that were unceremoniously big. dumped in a nearby forest. Had the Rhone Rhine Canal been just a little deeper, Stefan Breitweiser might once again have slipped through the fingers of the justice system. But it wasn't to be. Hikers spotted a curious twinkle from the depths of the canal about a week after the hall had been dumped. And the rest is history. That's fucking Police crazy. Police frogmen were called in to dredge the waterway and close to a hundred treasures from Stefan's mighty hoard were fished out and catalogued. Of course, at this point, the authorities had no idea how all that stuff had actually ended up in the canal. But one of the officers holding Stefan in Switzerland got wind of the find and whim, decided to see if he could link the treasures to his bugle thief. After all, they'd been found not too far from his home city. During an interrogation, the officers showed Stefan a picture of one of the artifacts recovered from the canal. Stefan had no idea what his mother had been up to since his arrest. And so, on seeing an image of one of his most prized possessions in the hands of the police, he reached the obvious conclusion. They'd searched his apartment and found his hoard. The game was up. Stefan promptly <laughs> confessed to having stolen the piece matter of factly explaining when and where he'd taken it. The officer was absolutely delighted. Well, I he imagine it would be that big. was a long shot, but he'd hit the jackpot first time. Safan was shown image after image of rare and expensive artwork stolen from all around Europe. And he confessed 
to having stolen every single piece. Never in their wildest dreams had the Swiss police thought that this one man could have possibly taken everything they dredged out of the canal. Well, why are they believing him? Like, he could be covering for the own. other people. And yet, quite clearly, he had. So, what punishment does a man receive for stealing dunk. over a billion dollars worth of art? Hands chopped off at the wrists? Hung, drawn and quartered? Guillotined to the face? No. Just three years in prison. <gasps> what? The man only served a little over two of those. His mother, for her part in disposing of the art, served just 18 months. And Catherine, hinting that she too had been gifted with a fairly weighty set of metaphorical balls, denied having any involvement in the thefts whatsoever. In fact, she claimed to have There's had no queso. idea Stefan was even an art thief. The court probably wouldn't have bought it, but it seems Stefan was happy to take the bullet for his girlfriend, because he confirmed every word that came out of her mouth. Anne Catherine was sentenced to six months for receiving stolen goods, but she only spent a single night behind bars. Oh my god! It doesn't end quite there either, because it turns out she did absolutely nothing to reform Stefan Breitweiser. In 2011, police found more than 30 works of art stashed in his house. Stolen, naturally. Just sell it, Stefan! three years behind bars. Jesus! And in 2019, he was arrested once again for trying to sell a paperweight stolen from a museum in San Luis on eBay. Thank you, at least you tried to sell it this time. Not sloppy. But hey, sloppy or not, Stefan Breitweiser remains quite possibly the greatest art thief to have ever more, No, he's more the dumbest Thanks thief to ever exist, I would say. Do you he just chose the right target. Like, he's perhaps one of the dumbest thieves I've ever heard of. He just went to the right places. All he did was take the fucking art off of the wall when no one was looking at him. That's like something you do as a child when you take a cookie out of the jar when your mom leaves the room. No one else thought of it like he did. Yeah, because it's so stupid. But I guess, to be fair, if you've ever been to an art museum, I've only been to one, like one actual one. I went to the Salvador Dali Museum when I was a kid. There's no security. There is only cameras. And his strategy was just push the camera. And I guess they just never checked the cameras to see if it got pushed. So I guess just by pushing it and then waiting, you could just take anything from any art museum ever. Steal a painting. I kind of want to now. It seems like it's a, like no punishment. That was pretty interesting. Probably not in America. Well, true. Yeah, probably not in America. You can go to jail for like 10 years if you steal something that costs 500 bucks. From like a gas station. He would love NFTs. Yeah, he's he's still like trapped in this archaic way of stealing art. He really should just steal NFTs at this point. It'd save him a lot of trouble. And there's no consequence. God slap NFT win. Unironically, a great fucking idea. Just called God slap an NFT. And then you get those fucking dumb brainwashed idiots that praise things like the Red Ape family and just spend millions on it for no reason just because it says it's an NFT. So I'll just put like every issue as an NFT or something and let them fucking toss money at me for no reason. Oh yeah, there's plenty of NFTs that use me and every streamer. Every streamer ever on Twitch, no matter how big or small, they have an NFT right now that they haven't sanctioned. It's just everyone's trying everything to make as much money as possible through NFTs from these fucking dumb idiots. People just keep making the worst ones. One of the one of those big ape themed ones just disappeared from the internet with almost three mil. Which one? Oh, all right, I think I'm gonna call it a night. I'm getting tired. channel sucks now. I used to love Jubilee like two years ago. Now it's just always the same kind of video. It's not very interesting. Which one did you want me to see? Six theater kids versus fake. The rich versus poor. Is the economy rigged? Ah, this is what I've... 
This is what I want to watch. As a real estate guy, I can make millions of dollars and use the exact same tax loopholes that a Donald Trump would use exactly. and pay effectively no tax. Uh, and does that make me a bad guy or did I just study the tax code? It makes you a bad guy, yeah. Get fucked, idiot. So why do you want me to watch this? This seems really boring. Thanks for two good subs, Matthew. Step forward if you agree. You're telling me this guy's poor? There's no fucking way. This is an actor right here. This guy is definitely not poor. Look at that. This guy's looking nice. He kind of looks like Pedro Pascal. Guy. 14 guys compete to date two women. Oh, oh, so Boyne and Neutrino. Hey guys, welcome to the game of love. I'm your host, Lisey, and this is Dating Dodgeball. Yeah. Two beautiful bachelorettes. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Nicole, I'm 21. I'm from Redondo Beach, and a fun fact is I love the Happy Face Fries from BJ's. Um, hi, I'm Jess. What? I don't even know what I'm you just said. What did, she, what did she like? Japan, and I really like baking banana bread, but I don't have an oven, so we're pulling through. Oh, uh, right, man. All right, gentlemen, the rules are simple. Sometimes the world's just you not fair. You guys are gonna throw a ball at the bachelorette you wanna go on a date with, and there's only four slots available what? on your teams, so aim wisely. Also, ladies, if you're feeling someone, go ahead, step up and get hit. But if you're not, dodge those balls. This is fucking garbage. Why does why do people still want me to watch Jubilee? It's not fun. Shit's trash. Just actual garbage. Man, why are you such a douchebag? Because I didn't want to watch the political video you kept spamming? Sorry, others are interested in actual intellectual content. Yeah, man, I'm sure these high schoolers are gonna discuss this on a really intellectual level. I'm sure that'll be pretty insightful. When you hit puberty twice, is that a meme? Man, this sounds wonderful. They got a demon up there. God damn, that guy's awesome. Where is he? Is this guy? His voice just sounds like a fucking flat tire, really. That's awesome. Corpse? Yeah, a little bit. That man's absolutely a demon. Man, this quartet is fantastic. Oh, it's this guy again, but older. Ooh, his normal voice isn't that low. That's cool. That guy seems nice. GDF official. Thanks to resub FedEx. All right. Is this just your channel? What is this? These are just TikToks. But well, I mean, we're here anyway. Let's go. What's up guys, today I'm eating birria tacos. Ever heard of them? Well, maybe you have, but I bet you've never heard of the first 9-11. After being elected president of Chile on September 4th, 1970, Salvador Allende was a dead man. U.S. President Richard Nixon and his national security hey, advisor Henry Kissinger and the gift immediately Rhinox. began staging their coup. On September 11th, 1973, their wish was granted. Tanks fired while they rolled down the boulevards toward the presidential palace as fighter jets blew Damn, up government rough. buildings. 24 rockets would be fired into the presidential palace. All of this while U.S. Never naval ships that. sat offshore and U.S. Air Force patrolled the skies, watching their plan unfold. Salvador Allende's lifeless body would be taken out of the presidential palace in a stretcher. The country was now in the hands of General Augusto Pinochet. And upon 
Upon seizing control, he had over 1,000 people immediately liquidated and thrown into mass graves. Roughly 13,000 people were arrested, guy. thrown into trucks, and imprisoned. Many would be taken to football stadiums in Santiago and put in locker rooms transformed into torture chambers. Pinochet would send his general, Sergio Arellano Stark, on a helicopter mission known as the Caravan of Death, where he would fly from prison to prison with his roaming death squad. Didn't Chile just get like a 35 year old a president? Thousands of these prisoners would who become the disappeared, tones? where people would simply vanish without a trace. With families holding on to hope that their loved ones were still alive, they would never be seen again. By the end of it, 80,000 people would be imprisoned, and more than 3,000 perished. That was pretty insightful. Those tacos must have slapped, though. All that from a Berea taco. Goddamn.